Bandwidth for Cincinnati Soccer Talk is provided by Cincy Shirts. Get your locally sourced FC Cincinnati MLS merch today by heading over to cincyshirts.com. Hey, what's happening to see us tears? Welcome to another exciting edition of Cincinnati Soccer Talk. Hope everybody dried out over the weekend. I know I'm still drying off a lot of clothes on Saturday night. Glad you're with us here on CST. Lots to get to. Uh, today. Losing 2-0 to the Philadelphia Union over the weekend. Uh, first home loss for the Orange and Blue at home. We'll talk about that match. We'll also talk about the upcoming two matches for FC Cincinnati as they get ready to host the Red Hot Sporting Kansas City and an even hotter LAFC out on the West Coast. And, of course, we'll talk a little bit about some stadium news. That's right. So we, we got some word last week from the Enquirer's Pat Brennan about uh, some changes upcoming with Cincinnati's West End Stadium. Of course, we're going to be reading your chats live tonight here on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. So make sure you get in touch with us uh, on Twitter at Cincy Soccer Talk. Of course, it's April Fool's, but unfortunately, we don't have any tricks up our sleeves here this evening. We're just here to talk a little soccer with you, with my co-hosts this week, uh, Boston Razzle Dazzle Brazzle and Rob Pierce. So uh, I'll start with... The one and only Boston Brazel. Boston, how are you doing, buddy? You good? Happy doing April well. Fools. I know this is kind of your this is kind of your day. Oh yeah, I love I love putting out a April Fool's article every year. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I spent a little bit of time trying to think of a horrific uh, prank to play tonight, and then uh, no, nothing came to me that would. Uh, I really wanted to play it on you, you, know, you and Rob, and n- nothing horrific came to me. Here's the problem: is I think that I goof off so much that I don't think you guys will believe a word I say. <laughs> we kind of expect or know what's what's coming up on this day, uh, especially with you uh, and your track record. But uh, no, I'm glad you didn't, uh, you know, give me any kind of kind of causes for for concern today and scare the life out of me. But uh, glad to have you here. Looking forward to getting your thoughts on, uh, on what occurred on Saturday night. Of course, uh, we're welcoming in Rob Pierce to the show, who didn't have anything to worry about as far as wetness Saturday night because he sat up in the nice cushy press box during the match staying nice and warm and dry Rob how are you doing buddy uh I am still dry uh it's true I I kind of had a nice vantage point uh good to see you again this weekend Subes. uh yeah. got to hang out a little bit for for breakfast there at hangover easy that is a that is a tasty place it's becoming one of my favorite uh, breakfast spots in Cincinnati with some of the with some of the dishes that they had we should try to do that a little more often <laughs> You're asking me to come to Cincinnati more often. Okay. Or, so. or or at least hang out with other CSTers and have you feel a little jealous that you're not there. Oh, you're just going to rub it in. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Well, no, it was good seeing you, Rob. Um, I'm looking forward to getting your your take on what happened this weekend here um, at uh, at Nipper Stadium, uh, FC Cincinnati. Before we get into all this, uh, we're, we're just going to remind each and every one of you, we're coming to you live from the CincyShirts.com Studios, go check out uh, CincyShirts.com for all their latest FC Cincinnati merch. Uh, click the links over at CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com. Uh, FC Cincinnati getting their first loss at home in Major League Soccer, 2-0 to Philadelphia. Uh, goals from uh, Fabian and Akam in the second half after a rain-soaked affair uh, means FC Cincinnati drops their first points at home. Um, surprising. I, I wouldn't say surprises as far as the starting lineup goes. Um, we knew that Watson had trained on Friday with the team, didn't get to start, probably a safe precautionary move there, uh, coming off a calf injury and then playing on an extremely wet surface like that. Can't say that I blame Alan Koch for not giving Watson to start gentlemen. Uh, so when you install him out of the starting lineup, uh, what were your thoughts? Um, I was a little concerned, not Terribly so. I mean, Lasso, and uh, he can definitely hold his own back there. And, uh, you know, you had Haglin back there as well. Um, so I wasn't terribly concerned. I, I guess I just didn't think uh, overall, not just necessarily in the back line, but that overall things weren't, uh, that, that things would go as bad as they actually did. I think this was one of those things where as soon as I knew about the weather, I got a little bit scared. Um lineup itself is, is not a it's not all that different uh 
than um, – in fact, you could even say it might be a little bit stronger than what we played against the Revs. Philly's a good team, and they knocked off a, a weakened Columbus crew. And – Pretty you know, I ha- Yeah, pretty easily. And I hate to – you know, I, I hate to lose this game because – we were at home and it's probably the easiest of the three, you know, this, this upcoming three game stretch. The The problem for me was, I just think they are way more experienced uh, in uh, the trials and tribulations of major league soccer, this weather um, they just dominated in it. And I think uh, what was uh, Rob, you had a quote in your article that from Spencer Ritchie that said last week, Alan Koch said new England did not come ready to play like we did and then spencer reggie said i think that's the reverse this week that sums it up for me yeah minus the um internal issues that the revs have um because they they seem to have uh, a little bit going on there but i want to go back to the lineup for a second the one thing that i kind of wish and you know hindsight's 2020 but the one thing that i wish i would have seen was kenny safe in the starting lineup as as the match progressed it was begging for him and i just wonder how things might have turned out differently if if he were in there to for the whole time that's interesting that you that you say that rob um you know i kind of agree i was surprised at especially after what we saw in new england uh but then you're bringing in somebody like alan cruz who was so effective against portland um it does pose some problems for for alan koch on who to pick especially in the midfield because it could be a whole host of guys. Um, obviously, we, we know what well, Lamar's done. We know what uh, Monty's done. But then we saw what Cruz did against Portland. Um, international duty meant he had to miss a week. But it, it's, a, it's a tough call, Rob. I mean, where do you put these guys and get them all on the field at the same time? Yeah, that's, that's the hard part. Um, just thinking about it a little bit, if, if it were me, I probably would have sat for Tony. But – um, you know, it's just me. I, I, I think, uh, safe, you know, we saw what he did when, uh, he's hit the pitch in Atlanta and what he's done since then. And, and for me, just to see him on the bench that I don't know, that's just kind of, uh, I kind of wonder about that. Boston, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, were you surprised safe didn't get the start? Oh yeah. Big time. Uh, that one blew my mind. Actually, it's probably my only major disagreement with the lineup. Uh, the fact that, that Kenny wasn't in there. We saw even when he came in, you're already down two goals, but he, he came in, he added a spark. Uh, it's, he did it versus Atlanta. So, you know, if, if you're running out the Atlanta method, then, then fine, I get it. But I think at that point it was just too late in the game. So maybe, maybe a, a halftime sub or, you know, once you see that we're kind of looking lethargic, uh, go down a goal and throw him in early. I know coaches hate to do that, but he really needed to be in there before the game was lost in my opinion. Yeah. And I'm seeing some, some great, um, uh, insight here on, uh, on Facebook with some of the commenters, uh, this is from Chris Marshall. Uh, Cruz just traveled though and played internationally 90 minutes. And you could tell, Boston, that some of these guys who were coming back on international duty um, seemed like they were a little bit leggy, like they, they were a little bit more, you know, a little more tired. And, you're, you know, you're playing 90 minutes in an absolute downpour um, in, in freezing cold weather. I mean, I, I know that's no excuse, but it just seemed on the pitch that it wasn't as crisp, it wasn't as – high pace as we had seen against Portland. Yeah. Um, Cruz, Cruz was an odd one. He, he played what back to back games on international duty and then, and then played for us. That, that was surprising. Why are we sitting lost? And I guess maybe because he got a knock in that, uh, in that game versus Jamaica and Cruz didn't. And so that's the difference, but I'm a little surprised. We have we have guys there that can play that position, so that that one is just odd. I, you know, I'm scratching my head there. Well, FC Cincinnati goes down two goals in the second half, and and I guess really kind of the big news leading up to the match, Rob, was the fact that we knew ahead of time that Frankie Amea uh, was going to be in the starting lineup for FC Cincinnati. Or I should, I'm sorry, not the starting lineup, but in the 18 was going to be dressed for the match. Um, so that, to me, was already kind of a big surprise. We hadn't heard a whole lot about him leading up to the match. And then he you know, he makes his debut in the second half. What did you make of his performance in the short amount of time he was on the field? Uh, I was actually, once he came in, I kind of had one eye on my riding, and, but I did have one eye on him on the pitch. 
Um, but I, I thought he did fairly well. You know, he comes in. Um, I'm sure this is a, you know, a big moment for him, but it's probably not the conditions that he's looking for. You know, I'm sure he's miserable out there uh, before he even, you know, hits the pitch and, and uh, you know, they're down uh, two nothing. But he comes in and he's he leads the team in passing, uh, something like 94 percent, 16 of 19 or something like that. So he's he's zinging balls around and and uh, I thought he did pretty well. How about you, Boston? Well, or was this a case of uh, it's the end of the night? I'm cold. I want to get out of there. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure that's how some of the guys in orange and blue felt. No, uh, what, what, what Rob had, and Rob also had this. I mean, the, Rob had a great, by the way, if you haven't read it, uh, post game recap. But you said that the guys were already jumping in the shower with in their full jerseys. The guys that were frozen solid didn't even wait for the 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 post game speech. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a quote from Alan. Yeah, that's quality. No, um, just going going back to the stands. Uh, I, I applaud everybody that that made it the full 90 minutes. I barely did. I, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I thought I stood there in the 80th minute and I said, would anybody notice if I snuck out of here and, and just tiptoed, you know, I, I'll be on the show Monday, but no one will <laughs> anybody really notice. Like, yeah, I was, I was dying. My feet felt like ice cubes and shoes. Yeah. I'll be, uh, I'll be honest. Um, at about the 34th minute, my son looked at me um, and said, can we please go at halftime? <laughs> and he's 10 years old. I'm not going to make him sit there in, in freezing cold rain. And he, he was pretty miserable. Uh, he was miserable when we left hangover easy for the March, to be honest with you. Um, that's a, that's a tough one to get through. And so, yeah, we went home at halftime, turned the car on, uh, listened to the second half in the car and got a chance to listen to the radio broadcast for the first time this year. But um, yeah, I, I had to give a lot of props to all the fans who, who came out. Uh, for I would say the first 30 minutes, Ben and I and my friends from Illinois, um, you know, we stood underneath the second deck on the east side of the stadium uh, in the standing room only section in between a La Rosa's Pizza pop-up concession stand and the stands. And not, it smelled so good standing there, by the way. But uh, it was it was dry for the most part. But then, you know, Ben couldn't see. So he was like, I want to go up to the second deck and, and see the game. So... We went up there and sat through the the downpour, um, and yeah, he was he was just ready to go. And but I, I was surprised at. Well, I shouldn't say surprised. I was um, I was impressed with how many people marched into the stadium in the rain. Yep. Yep. I was impressed with how full the Bailey was. I was impressed, honestly, with how full the entire stadium was. To be, I mean, it was. I, I thought with we knew the it was going to be raining. The forecast didn't you know, make any bones about it. We knew it was going to be a rainy night and still a a lot of people showed up. I I was, I was pretty impressed by that. What was really cool was I, I actually thought there were less people there because so many people were taking shelter up in the concourse and we marched in the March was, was really good for considering the terrible conditions. It wasn't freezing yet. You know, I'd say it was still, it was cold, but it was, it was, it was was a normal. Yeah. The temperature dropped throughout the game. Yeah. It was crazy. We left hangover easy and, I'm thinking, oh, I can handle this rain. I'm in my rain suit. You know, it wasn't cold. It felt fine. Yeah. And then it was like, I, I was shocked at how quickly the temperature dropped. I should, I should be used to it by now living in Ohio, but uh, it went, it, it's, it switched very quickly. Rob wouldn't know anything about what we're talking about. <laughs> I was shivering on my way from the press box to my car. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Is this after the match? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But real quick, I did want to give a shout out to the fans because when that game started, when that when that ball kicked off, everybody waited the last second. I don't blame them. But all of a sudden, just streams of people flooded down. Um, I don't, Subes, if you're in the second level, I don't know if you saw it, but they just flooded down into the first level, and it actually looked pretty, pretty solid, you know, for for such a terrible game. Now those people didn't make it the whole ninety minutes, and, and, and rightfully so, but. Man, it was cool to see them all come out of the the concourse there at the, that first minute. Yeah, I didn't get to see it because we were being uh, shooed away by an usher to get behind a black line, uh, <laughs> and uh, that way we weren't um, causing any disruptions. So uh, I happened to be standing there, and then Jeff Smith, uh, VP of Ticketing, uh, walked by. I was like, "Hey, Jeff!" <laughs> he goes, "Oh, you found yourself a dry spot, huh?" <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> best seat in the house. I was like, You're, you ain't kidding. But uh, yeah, a, a lot of props to not just the fans, but the you know the the concession people, the 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 the, the stadium workers who had to be out in the rain. Now this was the first time I've been in uh, been to a match where the constant rain was just you know like the the Red Bulls match from last year and and I've heard stories about it but this was I'll tell you what that the pregame march for me I was I was pretty pumped up jumping around in the rain at that point I didn't care that my feet were sopping wet um just covered in water um but then yeah that that temperature drop uh, I think somebody Mark in the chat room says it went from 65 to 42 by halftime. That's a pretty drastic drop. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> so um, let's talk a little bit. And I guess we, we kind of, we talked about Amaya's uh, appearance a little bit. Uh, obviously it's his debut. Uh, number one overall draft pick by FC Cincinnati. What will you remember more from this match? His debut or the weather? Ooh, putting you on the spot, Rob. Well, this is coming from the guy that stayed dry in the press box, but for me, it's the weather. Okay. Um, at at halftime, that was probably the biggest story storyline, right? You you had guys kind of slipping around. You could see Haglin slips after he makes a routine pass. Uh, Richie slips after he's you know going up to to grab the ball um, when he when he otherwise would have landed on both feet. Um, so for me, that was bigger. If Amaya had started or if he had maybe come in with more of a chance to affect the game, then my answer would probably be Amaya. But uh, as it stands, I, I go with the rain. <laughs> uh, I did. I love to see an Amaya come in, but I wish it was under better circumstances. Man, what a well, you you work your butt off. You get Alan Koch's attention and then you have to come out uh, to a two nothing deficit and try to try to maybe make it 2-1. Uh, I felt bad for the guy. But, hey, um, he had amazing passing accuracy. I know he's only out there, what, 10, 15 minutes, but he led the he led the team in, in passing, and, and he made clean, cut, clear, crystal, beautiful passes uh, yeah. from the moment he came out there. So I was impressed. I really thought he was going to come out there and, and not do very well. I, when I heard the, this week when Jeff Walner reported that he was going to start or, or be in the 18, I was like, eh, a little too soon for me. But uh, Alan Koch uh, saw something I didn't see because he definitely earned that spot. He did. Oh, he did pretty well. Would like to see him more. Hopefully, what I want to see is we, we we come out there, we we put two. You know, we're leading by two goals, and then I want to see what Frankie Mike can do. Well, you want to see what he can do, but where are you going to put him? You know, who are you going to take off? I mean, we want safe to play, but he can't even get on the field. <laughs> well, if if FC Cincinnati's up, I don't have a you know I don't have a problem taking anyone off. He he's a forward, right? So put him uh put him up where Lamar and Audi are. He's more if, of a if, midfield. I would you think so, more like a, a midfielder. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they can um they can make room for him in the future. I wouldn't put him in the eighteen. You know, next week we have two really rough games. You're gonna need what I would consider your starting eighteen. Your your main guys. If you're not injured, you need to be in that in that lineup. We need Boston back. We need uh, safe starting, in my opinion. Um, Garza starting, and then and then go from there. Sort of more similar to that um, uh, Portland game. Yeah, I would say this. Keep an eye on the two weeks from now when they play LAFC, Rob. Uh, going back home playing in front of his hometown uh, against a team that really made, made it clear they kind of wanted him. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. That's that's a very good point. Um, maybe maybe he'll at least be in the 18 for that one. Yeah, maybe maybe he'll get a shock start. You never know. You yeah. just never know. With yeah. this lineup. We think we think we know what we're talking about here, and then all of a sudden we see something else. So um, Alan Koch likes to keep us on our toes, and as, as he should. Coach Boston would not approve of that move. <laughs> Uh, so if you had to give a man of the match performance, Rob, uh, who would you give it to? Uh, Roland Lamar. Um, he had the one offside goal wiped away, uh, it, rightfully so. And then he had that uh, really clean look there in the second half that uh, that could have been an equalizer if not for for that uh, pretty pretty good save. So for me, it's Roland Lamar. Boston? Oh, man. <laughs> it doesn't I can't have to be it. an FCC player. It could be somebody from the Union. 
I can't give it to Roland Lamar. Um, I just, you know, Rob's right. He had the only chance of the afternoon, but that's not saying much. I mean, that's just yeah. like, hey, guys. Um, no, we we got bossed around. We really did. We got bossed around by uh, Philadelphia. I think even at the in the first half, it was 0-0, and Philly led in every metric. Uh, so um, I'm not putting that, you know, we're still a young team. I'm not down on FC Cincinnati if you're listening to this, you know. I – Still have a lot of respect for the team. I think it's just going to be a rough. Remember, we, you know, we, at the beginning of the season, we were all braced for a rough start, and then we win two games, and I think everybody, including me, got a little hopeful there for a little bit. And no, just get back to that mind frame. It's going to be a rough start, and then when you win, it's 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 awesome and it's a surprise. But uh, I, I am I'm going to give a let's see, man of the match to um, Com. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Com. And then. Um, I hate to do that, but he's uh, scored. He looked good, and he's had a rough start to the year, so uh, good for him. Hopefully, we uh, kick his butt next time we play. Yeah. I, if I had to give to anybody, uh, I really liked uh, being uh, being able to see um, Fabian uh, play for Philly. Uh, this guy is a, a member of the Mexican national team, uh, has played over in Europe. Um, I was really impressed with uh, how he was able to link up play there in the midfield for the Union Um you know, for a while, and from what I saw there, uh, sitting on the upper deck uh, for the last 15 minutes of the half, it felt like a goal was coming. Uh, it just felt like corner kick after corner kick after corner kick was happening there, right in front of the Bailey and Haglin and Lasso were heroic, heading those balls five. away, five yeah, in a row. It was crazy, um, but it just felt like it felt like a goal was coming, and uh, the fact that FC Cincinnati was able to get out. Uh, to the halftime locker room, uh, you know, with a clean sheet was good, but uh, eventually uh, the well broke and uh, the floodgates. Oh, how fitting uh, was that that uh, it opened up there in the second half? But um, yeah, I was pretty pretty impressed with him. I enjoyed seeing him play. Uh, probably one of the the best players I've ever seen from an international standpoint. Uh, you know, I, I've seen obviously Ashton Schweinsteiger play at Nippert Stadium, uh, but uh, Fabian played. I, I don't know. What did you guys make of his performance, Rob? You you had a chance to watch him from up above. Yeah, yeah, I thought he did really well. Um, his his skill showed, and I thought he uh, he teamed up really well with Akam. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, if, if I had to, you know, if I could kind of go back a second and say my overall man of the match, there then it would probably uh, either Fabian or Akam. Um, FCC would be Lama, but overall Fabian or Akam. Yeah. What is this? You redoing your pick? Are you Brian Weigel now trying to claim or Brad Weigel trying to claim that your Growler Cup pick after the game? Yeah, for those of you who are following the Growler Cup stats, go take a look at at, at uh, what is it, Brian? Yeah, Brian's stats. They uh, he he claimed he made a pick. Uh, I don't know. Apparently, all you have to do at the FCC matches is just stand next to Boston, say your score line out loud, and that is your Growler Cup pick. I forgot to submit my pick this week, but I told drunk Boston in the stands. <laughs> that's your verification? I don't know. Uh, we kid because we care, Bri. Uh, no, we'll, we'll talk about the Growler Cup a little bit later on in the show. Um, but no, it, look, it, this is one of those. And we, I've actually seen this word being thrown about here in the chat. Uh, this, this is kind of an outlier of a match due to the, 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 the weather, the circumstances, the, the conditions. You kind of chalk this one up to, oh, all right, you, you, you move on. And you got to do it quickly because you've got KC, who just scored seven on a, a really good Montreal team, and then LA, like I said earlier, they're on fire at the moment. So uh, we'll talk about that here in just a minute. It's that time of the show. It's actually this the, the time of the month where it's the first week. So what does that mean? We announce every single supporter's name here on the show. So we're going to take a minute. Uh, a minute. We're going to take a minute. To give a big shout out and thanks to Kings Hammer and Tim Bronsel, Matt Adamchick, who, by the way, while I interrupt our supporter shout outs, I sat down at Skyline in Florence on Friday evening, and all of a sudden I hear the person behind the counter yell, Subes! Now, I'm not expecting this at all. <laughs> yeah, in Florence. Right, in Florence of all places where I've been to in my life twice. Yeah, y'all. And um, the the person behind the counter, she asked, like, do you recognize me? And I was like, unfortunately, I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> so and she goes, I'm Matt Adam Chick's daughter. And I was like, no freaking way. And I had met her before. 
Um, but no, it was really cool. I, the, the one time I feel like a celebrity, uh, it, it, it was, it, it was go fitting at, at, at skyline, but anyway, uh, it was cool to see her. So thank you for shouting me out, uh, and saying hello. Uh, let's also give it up to, to mama Subs, Brian Malone, Jamie Smed, Mike Hudson, Jonas, Tom, Jack Emery, Mike Bowman, Kathleen Francis, Jesse King, Teresa Everidge, Matt Imholt. Liverpool is superior to Man U still. Uh, Matthew Long and Joe Coling, John Davidson, Patrick Lonnie, Dave Tangler, Alex Yersky, Claire Hughes, Carl Fight, Scott Griffith, Josh Lease, Kevin Johnston, Derek Smed, Greg Harrell, Jack Doyle, Doug Ross, James Denbo, the Cincy Superfan, Tom Grabo. Tom, when are you going to get Stevie involved? We got to get Stevie as a supporter. Come on, Tom, get on that. <laughs> Timothina Harris, Chris Howard, Sarah Spriggs, Paul Hetker, Michael Winland, Mattis Brumbach, Courtney Rice, Scott Party, Joe Collier, Richard Rolson, Christina Sharma, Nate Hale, uh, Brandon Jones, Adam Alexander, Chima John, Mike Berryman, Andy Rosen, Jeff Egan, Joseph Wells, Becky and Matt Ryan, Stephen Buckeridge, uh, Gary Randolph, AJ Stork, Alec Mackey, Jamie Lay, Angela Cardwell, Anthony Zawaski, Scott Kaplan, Colin Rink, Jason DeBrewer, Robert Finley, Arthur Oliva, Scott Wilson, Stephen Haldeman, Wesley Jackson, Dave Dorsey, Corey Finneran, who I had the pleasure of hanging out with his family this weekend, who made the trip all the way in from Illinois. And I'm sorry about the rain, Corey. <laughs> Nick Roth, Austin Spiker, Brad Baker, Mitch Autry, Matt Weirman, Chris Hubbard, Michael Mutchler, Brian Homan, Troy Reinemeyer, Alex Naughton, and Mark Newenschwander. Mark, I really hope I got that right. Thank you so much for supporting us here at Cincinnati Soccer Talk. To learn more about how you can do just that, head on over to CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com slash support. Uh, Bob on Twitter says, Sub's too cool for fans. No, that is not the case. <laughs> I'm far, <laughs> far from cool. Just ask my kids. Uh, let's talk about the next two matches for FC Cincinnati as they get ready to host Sporting KC. And, of course, they're going to go out west for the first time and play LAFC. Uh, they combined for 12 goals over the weekend, gentlemen. 12. How concerned are you uh, going up against these just fantastic offenses? Concerned? Um, concerned with a capital C, Subes. Okay. Um, mostly about Sporting KC. I mean, uh, I think LAFC is kind of more of a one-trick pony. They got Carlos Vela, uh, who's a very good player. Don't get me wrong. But I think it's, it's kind of one of those situations where if you can stop him, then they have weaknesses. Uh, Sporting KC is just a really good all-around team, you know. And I, I, I have heard a lot of people saying, even on our staff, saying, "Well, they got Concacaf this league. You know, they they play Wednesday. Uh, they're going to be tired." I I don't buy it. Like they're a complete team. They've had a great academy system. They bring people up and they play great. They this is a team that doesn't spend a ton. I mean, they, they, they're they right around the average mark in Major League Soccer, but consistently, year after year, they're good. I admire them. I want FC Cincinnati to be like them. Um, seven goals on Montreal. Holy cow. Yeah. Um, I, I, I respect Kansas City. I just I don't I don't have high expectations for this game, and that's fine. I wrote this game off before the season even started. Now, if FCC can go out there and play them well, I, that's what I want. You know, I'm not demanding Koch get a win here. I'm just, I would just love to see our team go up against Sporting KC and hold her up. Boston mentioned um, Kansas City's budget and kind of the way that they use money. And I think that's what's really uh, impressive to me is they, they don't have, you know, a star. They don't have like a Zlatan or, or a Vela or a Rooney or somebody like that. But they just get these, these uh, they find good talent at the right price. And Peter Vermees uh, is just able to, to mold them and fit them into the system. And uh, Sporting Kansas City is my pick to win the MLS Cup. Same here. And so I, I think you, um, you know, they, they might not have the, uh, the top of the table status that LAFC has or that Seattle has right now. But uh, as, you know, the 7-1 to score would indicate, uh, you take Sporting Kansas City uh, lightly at your own risk. Yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned that about that. Sporting KC, and, and I don't want to dive too deep into that match specifically because we will have March to Match Day coming up, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But um, you're right about system. Now, Peter Vermees, I mean, there, there's a reason why Peter Vermees was slated as a really probably top three candidate to be the United States men's national team coach. 
I mean, his system works for what you know he's trying to accomplish. They defend well, they pass well, they shoot well. I mean, they are a well-rounded team. They're not just um, a one-trick pony, as Boston said a moment ago. Um, Johnny Russell came over from from England, who had played in the championship over there, scored a lot of goals. Uh, he's come over here and, and been impressive. Um, surprisingly, uh, they just lost, I believe, Ike Opara, one of the best, one of their best defenders, and now he goes to Minnesota, and they're not missing a beat. Um, they they plug and play there at Sporting KC. Um, Christian Namath, who they brought in uh, on a trade from New England, who was there playing for the Revs and not doing much, he goes to Sporting, and look at him. Now all of a sudden, he's looking like a, a brilliant forward as well. So, Sporting KC, I mean, they're not flashy, but they will they will punish you. And if you, if you're not defending well, if you're not up to snuff, so, um, you know, you see what has happened the the last, I guess the start of the season for, for FCC, it feels like right now, job one is to protect, protect our, protect our goal, playing in that low block, two lines of four at least, but teams like sporting and teams like LA, they have the firepower to break that down pretty easily. Yeah, and even against Philly, we saw. I almost thought we got away from it a little bit, and not not to rehash and go back. Um, but against Sporting KC, I do think that is going to be a, a need to be a priority, and you're going to need to have the right personnel in there to to keep it on lockdown. And you're right, it's going to be tough because people will be able to dissect it. But one thing I don't think you want to get caught here is is um, going turnovers in the midfield this time would be detrimental either way uh both of these next next two teams will will rip us to shreds if we have uh stupid turnovers in the midfield because fcc likes to send defenders forward and if you get caught too far forward like we did in seattle then uh we'll get ripped apart here anything to add to that rob uh no not not really all right fair enough look uh, look this is going to be when we looked at the schedule ahead of time, uh, back way back in the preseason, we, when they were first announcing these slated games, these are two games I think we all circled and said, if FCC can get two points out of the possible six here, <laughs> I think they'll take it <laughs> and run away like they just robbed a bank. Uh, because these two teams are top of the echelon, top teams in, in Major League Soccer. Um, but I, I still think, and I, I think we saw over the weekend, teams have adjusted, right? What did Portland do against FC Cincinnati? They got the ball wide and tried to hoof crosses into the box, right? Same with New England. We didn't really see that from Philly over the weekend. They worked the ball around in the middle of the park and got the center mids moving. They got the center backs moving, and FCC paid the price. And teams like Sporting and teams like LA, they have the wherewithal to do that, Rob. Yeah, that's one thing that um, uh, that, that could – end up hurting FC Cincinnati is uh, play right down the middle. They, they definitely have the firepower to do that. You're, you're right about that. Yeah. And again, we're, we're getting hammered on, on Facebook here, but we're, we're uh, optimism is one thing. Realistic is another. Um, and he, here's the thing, you know, about the, the, the comments. Um, I don't feel like we're actually being down on FC Cincinnati here. There are rough parts of a schedule where I think it's just logical to look at them and say, okay, you know, if FCC can get one point or two points in the next two games and then move on and, and beat the next team, you know, I think who do, who's next uh, rebels or real Salt Lake. So, you know, if they, if they can go out and real Salt Lake is, is a team FCC should get three points against, especially right now. You know, they're a bottom half of the table team. So it's kind of just budgeting that out. Now, we all want to win, but um, we're an expansion team. You know, if this was year two or year three, I think we'd be talking a little bit differently. I'm just trying to uh, set expectations. Yeah, it's, it's just being realistic is all. But consider this. At the beginning of the year, we kind of looked at the, the Seattle and the Atlanta and Portland. And if you had told me that after five games, FC Cincinnati had – seven points i'd have taken it but i i still think this this is some tough competition that we're going up against so yeah it's, it's not being pessimistic it's just realistic yeah it's a little different for us too right in the usl we only had to worry about the east and uh major league soccer you gotta play every single western team once and and that's a whole new slew of of giants and 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 you know, weaklings like San Jose, like uh, I would love for them to be coming up here, <laughs> but we'll, we'll have to wait a bit. 
Yeah, I, I think sporting or not sporting. I think we pl- we do play San Jose here upcoming. I'd have to go back and look at the schedule. I don't ha- have it off the top of my head right now. But um, look, it, I guess we're just trying to paint the picture, right? Um, we we saw Philly who came in in a rainy night, kind of work us, right? I mean, it was not the best performance for the orange and blue. It didn't feel like really at any moment FCC was going to win that match. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm speaking out of turn here. It just felt that way from watching it. Uh, it felt like Philly was on the front foot. It felt like if the goal was going to come, it was going to come from them. Um, yeah, we wanted points there. We, we, you know, but that's one of those games where nature happens and we can write some of that off there. Um, but, uh, it does hurt. I think. I think that Philly loss hurts the next two more. You know, it, it, that's where you'd really like to see us try to make up ground, and we really need to make up ground by, um, by what I would say, uh, by Salt Lake. And let's also not forget. I still don't think Alan Koch knows who his best eleven is. I think he's still trying to figure out what works, what partnerships are going to work. You know, this is the first time he's really had to deal with international call ups. So having to rearrange guys for that giving guys rest who need it. Um, you know, he's, he doesn't have his, his target number nine in Fernando Adi. You know, he's missing some some an important player there. He's missing Waston this weekend. So I still think there's some figuring out that he's trying to do here. Um, he, he, I, I think they're going to learn a lot in these next two matches between Sporting KC and, and, and L.A. I, I really do. And it, whether they lose 1-0 or 5-0, I, I, it, it, at this point, it's still early on in the major league soccer season that they're they're learning, and that here, Rob, is kind of what you want. And that's that's a good point. These matches might be tough, but it it will at least give uh, uh, Coach Kasha a learning experience, and he'll be able to figure out what uh, does work and what doesn't work, and what could potentially work, and and things to work on, and that sort of thing. So yeah, I I think you're exactly right. And. Pay attention to Sporting KC too. Like these are fun games, in my opinion, because we can actually see how they're built, how they play, and and because we already know the style. Jeff Birding and Alan Kotchev went out there and said, "Hey, listen, we're, we're maybe we're maybe not going to sign, you know, giant LA Galaxy, Toronto FC type of DPS. So we need to emulate the Sporting KC. So if if you're new to major league soccer and this is like your first season watching it watch watch this team because this is what we need to be even if we beat them draw them lose to them it doesn't matter like that's that, that that's a system we kind of need to implement so as a fan i just take all that in you know it's the first first season in uh, mls and and this is one of those uh teams that's good year after year yeah i i'm glad you said that too uh sporting kc is a good team to model yourself after uh, I agree, hundred percent. You know, it just it wasn't that long ago that Sporting KC traded Dom Dwyer, one of their leading scorers, uh, to Orlando, and you would think, wow, what what are they thinking? But honestly, Sporting hasn't skipped a beat, and I think maybe even Dom Dwyer is still trying to get things going down there in Orlando. So, a little uh, a little sadness there for James O'Connor. Do we care? Mm, no. Not so much. Anyway, uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts, though. Uh, get in touch with us. Um, uh, feedback at CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com. What are you most looking forward to over these next two matches for the Orange and Blue? Well, last week in our third segment of the show, we talked about flow. Well, this week, we're going to talk about glow. And I'm not talking about the Netflix TV show. Uh, the Orange Glow apparently is coming back to the West End Stadium. Um, the Cincinnati Enquirer's Pat Brennan and Sharon Coolidge reporting last week that Mies Architects has been replaced as the West End Stadium designer and now Populous takes over. Uh, Populous, if you're not familiar with their work, uh, they built the uh, soccer-specific stadiums in the upcoming uh, upcoming stadium in Minnesota, which will be unveiled here shortly, Uh, Orlando, Kansas City, and D.C., which just opened this past year as well. Um, Surprising quotes in this article from, uh, from Jeff Birding about the vision of the FC Cincinnati stadium in the West end. Um, it didn't say so much that Meese was fired Boston, but he was it, fired. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway, um, but really to hear, um, Jeff Birding talk about the, the vision of the stadium, which glow was being removed. 
did it bother you? Were you concerned? And now that you hear it's back, I mean, what do you make of all this? I didn't get too caught up in it. Uh, well, the one thing that did concern me was the the bland, temporary white three sided roof stadium that they showed us um, in in its place. And I know it was a rush job; it was just something to throw in front of city council. But man, it looked like plain and basic and at that point i was like what happened to the orange glow why are we getting this yogurt lid stadium and uh <laughs> and that bothered me a little bit but uh i mean i'm cool with it being back i just I, my my biggest concern now is is are we gonna have the spaceship in in the west end behind music hall can we make it blend in a little bit and uh, populace is i really do like their work and i think the stadium render with the orange glow that they keep showing that was in that article with the inquire that's not the final design um especially with the new architect on it we're gonna see some kind of a, a hybrid thing come out and i'm hoping that it's got some west end nods a blend in the neighborhood um sounds like the glow is only kind of a night thing so uh, up until a certain point so we'll I, it needs to look good in the daylight too i was gonna yep. say i wouldn't expect the glow to be happening during the day rob but i mean the fact that they've broken ground already and they've changed the designers um you know that's kind of kind of a big deal yeah yeah um 4 p.m to 1 a.m if i read the story right or operating hours for for the for the orange glow um i think they did away with it because of maybe some resident concern and i get that you don't want to be like the um the kenny rogers roasters episode of seinfeld where (laughs) you can't see anything but but yeah, um, whether it whether it glows or not, that's that's not a you know a big concern to me. But yeah, things things are moving. Ground is moving out there, and that's that's pretty exciting. We did get this uh, comment on YouTube from Mike Berryman. He says, "Forget the orange glow. Need a good roof, Boston." Yeah, for please please side the whole thing. Um, the 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 image where they took out one of the sides. Like if if you're gonna cut costs, cut the lights. Uh, cut the orange glow. <laughs> Make sure that the roof goes all the way around the stadium. I did not like the three-sided uh, terror that we got earlier. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, obviously Jeff Burning disagreed with uh, Mies's vision. Uh, Mies probably had to make some cuts because he couldn't fit it all in the 250 million dollars. Jeff said, "No, you're going to give me this," and he said, "I can't." And he said, "Well, you're fired." This is how I imagine that this boardroom meeting went down. Yeah, Boston here at this point is purely speculating. No, no, I was there. Um, <laughs> I was invited. I, I, I'm actually an expert uh, oh, firing are you? people. So oh, okay. <laughs> they brought me in, and I was the one that stood up there, and I said, give Jeff what he wants. <laughs> All right, you're fired. Uh, April Fool's, everybody. Um, yeah, I, you know, to me, I wasn't like um, – I wasn't like all caught up in the whole orange wrap around the stadium. I think it looks cool from you know the graphics we've seen. I'd wonder how it would look like actually in real life. Um, for me personally, if it was uh, what I've seen, and I actually was very fortunate uh, last week when I was in town to to drive around the stadium site and see what it, where it was going to be. I felt like the orange glow. I think it'll have its place there, but I don't know. I, I feel like maybe a, a brick exterior might, I don't know, fit the neighborhood a little bit more, which is kind of what you want. You want it to blend in, but I guess if you have a vision and you're ponying up millions of dollars like they are, you kind of want it to be what, what you want it to be. Yeah, there's something to be said for that. I mean, uh, if, if you have a vision, you want you that's exactly what you want it to look like. I mean, you're not going to, Stray too much from that. So yeah. someone on face, someone on face, Tina Tina Harris on Facebook is saying that that she thinks the the image I saw with a piece of of missing roof is because of the skyline view, and uh, them wanting to keep that that available. If I'm reading this right, so there maybe there is a purpose, and, and I'm too dumb to see it. Uh, but uh, just just so our listeners know, I, I might be a little slightly off, and that there is a plan there. That is a good point. I didn't think about that. Um, I'm not worried about the skyline view. I'm worried about what I see on the field. <laughs> I'm worried about being covered from the elements, and honestly, having the cover over the over the stadium so that not and not the whole stadium, but having to keep noise in. Right, you want it to be loud. If you don't have that covering, 
you're letting a lot of that noise out. And um, I don't know. For me, I I guess I can see why they want the, the city skyline. Um, I, that's kind of why they picked their location. But um, I don't know. For me, I'm not ra- I'm not caught up in the whole glow. I'm not caught up in whether or not they have that. Um, at this point, get the stadium built, and let's get playing in it, right? <laughs> you know, I'm excited about that part. Yeah, when you put it like that, then. But it, but see, this is this is a podcast where we're supposed to analyze every uh, brick and paver that they put in the stadium. So, you know, I'm expecting some serious criticism. I'm expecting you to step up your criticism game here in the next couple of years. Oh, okay. You want me to criticize the stadium? No, that no, no. Um, but uh, if you notice, like a little bit of concrete out of place, you know, <laughs> I think I think it's your job, your duty, to mention it to the to the viewers so they know. I was kind of hoping that they would do it as a brick building so that we could buy that CST brick, and I'd have to like make them put all the CST names on it, uh, as small as possible to get to fit on that one tiny brick. They have to do that, right? Hey, if you're listening to this, how can we make this happen? Not 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 just for CST, I'm not talking about that, but like there are plenty of supporters out there that want to put their name on like a brick or on a a uh, piece of concrete or whatever, whatever the stadium is going to be built out of. And it's just free money to go towards the stadium, so why not do it? I mean, I know they might do like a season ticket holder tribute in some way. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about like have your name inside the stadium wall by paying 200 bucks for a brick or something. That's a cool idea. That is the Reds do that sort of thing. Um, uh, do I'm sure it's uh, long done by now, but outside of great American ballpark where you can, you know, pay so much money and you get, you know, whatever engraved on a, on a brick outside the stadium. Uh, FCC, you can send checks to 180 Southwood drive in Perrysburg um, for the idea. Uh, any royalties? Um, of course, I'm I'm totally kidding here. Um, no, I think that would be cool. I, I'd be more than willing to pony up to to buy a brick, whether it's on the stadium or, you know, maybe on a, a brick walkway outside the stadium, that sort of thing. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. And I'm sure, honestly, they've got their ducks in a row. I'm sure they have something planned for that. Um, I wouldn't. I would be very shocked if they didn't. So, but we want to hear from you. What did you think of the glow? Are you happy that it's back? Do you care? Do you not care? Uh, email us feedback at CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com. Short show this week, mainly because uh, I think we're still trying to dry out from Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously that was, that was a rough one to watch. But uh, obviously we'll have a lot to talk about over the next few weeks uh, here with Sporting KC and, um, and LAFC coming up. Uh, so we'll, we'll start to wrap things up here. Uh, final thoughts. From Boston, Razzle Dazzle Brazzle. Oh man, everybody's got me distracted with this brick. Well, you talk. know what? You know what? I'm Br- gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a wrench in your in your little uh, final thought here because believe it or not, Subs need to learn how to read a rundown that he wrote because we have plenty <laughs> to get to still. Uh, <laughs> we've got March to Match Day coming up this week, Boston, don't we? And you're doing a fine job hosting it. Maybe you should take over this show. Uh, <laughs> oh, good lord! <laughs> well, let us know what can we look forward to with March to Match Day this week. Um, so we have the uh, founder of uh, No Other Pod and writer for uh, Blue Testament for Kansas City uh, coming on our show, and it's going to be pretty awesome. I think you know I, I've listened to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hide his name from you guys though, so you have to pay attention. But uh, I've listened to the, his podcast before, and he's a really knowledgeable guy. Really looking forward to hearing how Kansas city sets up and how they'll set up against FC Cincinnati, especially with their, uh, net, their, you know, con- fi- is it with fixture congestion, yeah. with them playing on Wednesday, we're going to have a blast. It's going to be a great show. Jimmy Mack is the name Boston. I did a poor job of writing the rundown. I didn't, well, no, I, 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 gave you I all knew the, information. The, I, just I knew the name. the name. I was, I was, now you've outed it and everybody's going to go look them up. I wanted them to come to our show. So the, I was just highlighting how much of a failure I've been tonight with this rundown. <laughs> April Fools. Um, no, check it out. Go get subscribed to CST so you don't miss an episode of March to Match Day. Boston and Brad do a great job with that show. Uh, comes out every Wednesday evening. If you're subscribed to the show, uh, it'll automatically download to your podcast. So if you need help subscribing to the show for free, head on over to CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com slash subscribe where you can figure out how to do just that. Uh, Growler Cup presented by Omni Printing and Promotions. Uh, we did get some questions earlier tonight. We're just about halfway through the first round of the Growler Cup. 
for 2019. Remember, after the first round, the scores will reset, so it's not too late to join. Head on over to CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com slash support. Donate at the $5 a month level, and uh, you'll be entered into the Growler Cup. Uh, 14 people picked a draw over the weekend. Two picked a loss. Everybody else was feeling sky high and confident that FC Cincinnati would get three points against the Union. Boy, were they wrong. Yeah, that was um, me. I was wrong. <laughs> I had I was one of the 14 who picked the draw. But um, Joe Schmuck, CST photographer, currently in the lead right now. Uh, Trisha Hauser following up behind him, and then Kathy Francis in third place. If Hold you on. Wanna, oh, go ahead, Boston. Are you telling me that out of all the fans out there and all the p- staff members that breed soccer all day, our photographers beating everyone? Yep. Oh, my word. Maybe he reads soccer all day, too. Uh, yeah, I should give him credit. Maybe he doesn't just take pictures and, and, and do nothing else. Or That's what just, I imagine. That's what just, I imagine he does. He's just that close to the field and sees maybe sees it a little better than maybe we do. <laughs> well, good job, Joe. If you're yeah. listening to this, I'm proud of you. Yes, we're proud of you, too, Joe. Uh, but it's not over yet. you still got uh, five more weeks. Uh, again, CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com slash support is where you can do that. Uh, and if you want to see the current standings of the Growler Cup, uh, CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com slash Growler Cup is where you can find those. And uh, again, our thanks to Omni Printing and Promotions for presenting this year's Growler Cup competition. All right. Now that we've wrapped that up, we can actually get to final thoughts. Boston, razzle dazzle brazza. Have you had any more PTO lately? <laughs> no, but I am. I'm taking a week off to go to the New York Red Bulls game here coming up in this month. Yeah, it's April. So, all right. I'm on vacation month now. So I'll make sure to schedule you for the podcast that week. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and uh, I'll be at the New York game, so I'll be sending out some some uh, info for CST. So make sure you follow that. Um, also, shout out to the people on Facebook who just came up with the idea for glowing bricks. You guys, <laughs> I love you. This is the greatest idea ever. I'm on board. Let's make it happen. We'll just have the whole wall of the stadium glowing by people that donated money. Man. <laughs> This is geniuses right here on. This is why you watch the show live. <laughs> Good stuff, Boston, as always. I appreciate all you do for CST, buddy. Oh, just just happy to be here. Uh, final thoughts from uh, from Rob Pierce. Rob? Uh, my final thought is to give uh, kudos to Kendall Waston, who um, probably unbeknownst to him uh, was being the – I'm sure that was the last thing on his mind, giving um, uh, a wet ball person who did not have a, a jacket, the jacket, and that is character. That is what you want out of your captain, and that is something that uh, I've really come to, to like about this club uh, this year, last year, and, and on and on. So uh, kudos to uh, to Kendall for uh, for a pretty, pretty classy move there. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Yeah, I saw that he had uh, had done that. Um, whoever shot the photo, I can't remember if it was Joe or if it was uh, Jeremy. But, uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, no pun intended because it was cool uh, that night. Oh, man. Uh, the temperature drop, uh, we talked about it earlier in the show. I mean, that was crazy how cold it got. So uh, kudos to, to Kendall. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Rob. And as always, Rob, I appreciate all that you do for CST and uh, for the podcast. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, like Boston, I am happy to be here. <laughs> Uh, my final thoughts, um, <clears throat> we've done a really good job with fan cams, uh, fan cams the last few weeks. Uh, did not do them this weekend. <laughs> it was a little rainy. I wasn't about to have somebody ruin their equipment, and um, honestly, I was uh, unfortunately long gone at that point. So if you want to blame anybody for not having enough fan cams, you can blame uh, Father of the Year Nick Subling for not dressing his son a little, a little bit more warmly during the match. So I apologize for that. But we will continue to do fan cams throughout the year. So make sure you head over to our YouTube page, uh, youtube.com slash Cincinnati Soccer Talk. Get subscribed there uh, so you don't miss uh, any of our fun little videos, which we might be doing more of those throughout the week. So again, get over there and get subscribed. All right. That is going to do it. We've got CST Extra Time coming up next for Rob Pierce and Boston Razzle Dazzle Brazzle. I'm Subes, reminding you to watch your tackles, and we will see you all next week. Hey, we're back here on CST Extra Time. This is the part of the show where we just let loose. Just let loose. 
Um, I'm reading some of these Facebook comments. <laughs> uh, another April Fool's joke, Boston. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, breaking news. West End Stadium design rights sold to Flow Architecture. <laughs> oh, my word. I can't, I can't see anything else with the word flow in it for the rest of my life or I'll have a heart attack. Oh, man. All right. So first tweet. By the way, thank you to everybody who sent in tweets. And thank you to our staff intern, Jacob, for putting these all together. Uh, this is from Ryan. It says, do you all think Kenny Safe will be signed on a permanent or will the club go after a DP center attacking mid once his, once his loan ends? That's the sound of Boston thinking really hard. Man, I hate this question. I, 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 someone, has asked, someone asked me this, I think, at uh, Saturday, that the game, uh, before the game. Uh, I, we need to see a little bit more, right? And I think Allen needs to see more. Uh, I really like what Kenny Safe's brought to the table, which is what makes it hard. But if you sign Kenny Safe, that's it. You know, that's the third DP. Uh, there's no way you're. There's no way you can sign him. What is it? A three million dollar buyout, um, and then you got to pay a salary too. So there's you combine all that. He's DP. There's no way we don't have the Tamer game to buy him down. So it's either summer signing or Kenny Safe. It just really just depends to me how important is he come June July. If if we lose him and the team falls apart, then yeah, I know he he said he wants to go back to Europe, um, but if we have that loan buyout option, then you know I I I'd talk to him about it if if we really need him. But man, I would love to have a, a summer signing too. So this is this is this is tough. But do we really know how much game and Tim we have, Rob? Because <laughs> we have no idea. No, no, I uh, I. Don't know if anybody but the club knows. Uh, I think it depends on what Sasano finds overseas because he's been on record, you know, in the past, you know, before the season started that he wanted to be very active in the summer transfer window uh, to get uh, to get the third DP. Now, so who, if, if who he, was it that we found out we couldn't get because we didn't have enough? There, That came out. Fabian Johnson? Was that it? From... Lunch and well, that was last year. No, that yeah, that was too early. No, somebody recently, uh, I think it was Sam Steckel came out and said, I can't remember the player's name. It was an XYZ player. Cincinnati was interested, but they don't have enough Tama game to buy him down. We have enough for a DP because that doesn't count. Um but I just don't I don't I don't think we can get Kenny Safe and get a DP, is all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Well, it's a tough call because do you want I, – I guess I was kind of surprised watching the broadcast. I think it was – I was re-watching the Portland Timbers game, and they were talking about Kenny Safe and how his end goal really was to get back to Europe. So if that's the case, and obviously he's here to get minutes, he's here to get game time, um, do you want to spend a lot of money on a DP that you know doesn't – really want to be here I'm not, I'm not again i'm not saying he doesn't want to be here but when i heard those comments i guess i was kind of taken aback by it i thought if you're coming here you want to be here um so i don't know or you go out and get a dp who's you know a bit maybe maybe younger that is going to knock uh everybody's socks off it's going to sell some shirts i, I don't know yeah. I, i'd like to see safe here i think he for, for, honestly i want to see him more now um, let's see what we got, you know, who knows? I mean, we've seen him for what we saw him in the Atlanta match. We saw him in the, the revs match and that's kind of it. Hmm. Um, so I don't know if I was a betting man, I would bet that he's gone, uh, when his loans up and we bring in a, a summer signing and that he uses this stint in Cincinnati as a very good audition and visibility for the U S men's national team. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the question, Ryan. Uh, this next one is from our good buddy, Matt Imholt. I think Jacob picks these because he's a Liverpool fan. Um, Liverpool is superior. Uh, he says, how do you feel about the club announcing the signing of Mbappe from PSG? Uh, do you think he will start over Adi? Clearly an April Fool's tweet, right, guys? Yep, yep, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would be nice to sign Mbappe, but uh, not happening. I really do think Jacob just picked this one because Matt's a Liverpool fan. So is Jacob. get out of here, Jacob and and Matt and Rob's a Liverpool fan. 
Matt's, in my, Matt's in my poker group. I'm going to steal his money on uh, Friday. At the moment in the table, Liverpool is superior to Manchester United. Liverpool is superior to the entire English Premier League. For now. For now. Until City plays this week. <laughs> hey, Matt, just Venmo me your $50 now. <laughs> Oh, don't man. even need to. Don't even need to have. Thank a game. you for the question, Matt. Uh, by the way, it was fun hanging out and chatting with you over the weekend. Uh, at Hangover Easy. Uh, this next question from Arthur Oliva. Uh, he says there has been some talk about FCC two being placed in a different city. Would you prefer Dayton or Lexington, and what would you name that team? Lexington. Wow. So Boston's already throwing out the, the the Kentucky gauntlet there. Oh yeah. What would you I name think... the team? Um, whew. I don't know. I, th- I mean, the go-to is FCC too, but I don't think it'll draw. I don't. I think you need Cincinnati out of the name if you want it to do well in Lexington. I, end of the day, I think it would be. Uh, and this is. A, it, it, let me explain my reasoning, I guess, real quick. Dayton's a bigger market. If anyone has a realistic shot at a USL team, Dayton's probably going to be the one to get it. Uh, Lexington's just a little too small. You're looking at league, a league two team, league one team, whatever, whatever it is. And um, it would be a long time. I think it, I think it would be a long time. So I think FCC putting a, a team in Lexington is the fastest way and maybe the best way for soccer fans in that market to watch um, soccer right now. You know, it might be 10, 10 years before they can get a professional team of their own. So that, that, that's why. Yeah, I, I think Lexington is also right. Uh, team name, just as long as it's not the Wildcats, we're, we're fine. <laughs> Obviously, the color is going to be blue and white, right? Well, maybe not blue and white, but blue and orange. Um, I don't know why I said blue and white. Blue and orange, what about, like, it's got to be horse-related, though, right? I mean, it's got to be, like, I know, Rob, you're into horse racing. Uh, like, the Stallions or... Or thoroughbreds or thoroughbreds, yeah, thoroughbreds. That'd be a weird like name for a soccer team. Yeah, yeah, it would. I don't know. I'm sure the folks with the orange and blue grass, the the SG down there, has some ideas. Uh, yep. So that's uh, it. That's all the tweets we got this week. Although Gus Schlomer wants us to pick between LaSalle and Elder, what was a better high school? The answer is C. None of the above. <laughs> I'm not a local. I can't answer that one. See none of the above. Uh, all I gotta say is Moeller, state champs, twenty nine and zero. Here's a here's one that just came in from okay. Ken Hedger. Um, oh, no. Extra time. How many games does it take before one thinks there's trouble at Atlanta United? They have plenty of talent, but they are only barely ahead of the San Jose Earthquakes on offensive success. Do they figure it out? Or does the whole Frank DeBoer experiment blow up right in front of us? Well, here's the thing. Look, Atlanta over the weekend, did you see what they played on? I mean, that was, that made Louisville look like uh, like it was dry that night in Louisville last summer. I mean, that pitch in Columbus was just off. I can't believe they played the match, to be honest with you. Um, so you get you give Frank DeBoer a, pr- a pass on that one. I mean, come on. That pitch was unplayable. You can't judge him on that. Um, that's just my take. Um, it is kind of crazy to think that he hasn't won a league match in like three years. Um, that's a little scary, Rob. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I, I think Atlanta should be maybe a little bit more patient with him. Yeah, at least 10 matches. Um, maybe longer than that. Um, you know, it's it's hard to to do what uh, United did last year and then do it again this year. So, you know, something to something to build up to. I would I would give them some more time. Yeah. Any other questions that came into our Twitter there, Boston? Since you're a um, social media guy, I'll put me on the spot. I don't know. <laughs> I like putting you on the spot. I closed it out already. I figured I'd only throw uh, slide one extra one in there. So apparently in the chat room, uh, the name we were looking for was Wesley Snyder, formerly of the Netherlands national team, played uh, in some pretty big World Cup games, but he's getting up there in age. I think he's 35. So that would have been, not, I would say, not the best signing in the world. 
Yeah, I think some. I think a lot of people on the C- CST staff were not really loving that move anyway. Yeah. So Boston puts his phone down. I think that's uh, an indication that uh, no more tweets. Rob can't keep his eyes open because he's got to get up super early. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Uh, tell everybody about the the donut you ate at the Hangover Easy though on Saturday morning. Uh, this is one of my favorite sandwiches. Um, I have it twice a year. I, I love talking about this thing. Um, I have <laughs> normally I have it twice a year uh, for my birthday and on Father's Day. But this is now, I think this is the a, a third time, um, kind of like a time in between. It's called the, um, uh, what is the name of it? The, um, something about the long walk home, walk of shame. Oh, there you go. Yep. And it is a Holtman's donut with some bacon and some sausage, which I substituted for getta because why not? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um an egg and there was a slice of american cheese i prefer pepper jack but american does fine and it was fantastic it's the best sandwich i ever had ever yeah yeah i i like the way i do it better but uh, you know the way the hangover easy does it that's that's good enough that's, that'll that'll suffice but the way that i do it is the best sandwich ever wow interesting it looked good. I sat right next to you, and I'm not going to lie. I kind of wanted to take a bite, but uh, I wasn't going to be that guy. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> no, my breakfast was good, too. Boston, yours was good, too, as well? Yes, sir. Lemon poppy seed pancake. Very nice. I like weird good. stuff. It was good to hang out with the CST crew. Uh, I got home, and my wife pointed out, though, because we obviously, for those of you who follow us on social media, saw that uh, we had posted a, a group photo like we were about to hit the pitch, and... Um, She's like, you need more orange and blue. <laughs> so I, I had it on, but it was under my sweatshirt. And yeah, so anyway. If we, if we had more time, we could score uh, Ken's uh, predictions last week and see how well he did. No, I think that's kind of our cue to wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give I, I told him. I told him if, if he was more than halfway wrong, we were just going to cancel his article for the rest of the year. <laughs> No, I uh, I need to listen to what he's talking about because he's kicking butt in fantasy. So. Oh, yeah, he's, he's smart, dude. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the tweets. Thanks for tuning in and watching us live here on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Don't get Go get subscribed so you don't miss an episode of the show. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. See you, everybody. <laughs>